I'm sorry, you were saying? Or? Um, well, we have a quorum, but oh. um, we're missing Ben Barry. Uh, ben will be here in a few minutes. So yeah. Yeah. We'll be wrapping up the seven. So. Oh, okay. So, here's the after. Well, what I have here is necessary to reward. This was the project that's up for this session. Thank you. You're welcome. And also, one part. You know, right? Yeah. I haven't believe you've seen anyone. Yeah. That's right. Maybe you. No, I don't think so. I met Chris. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone. Yeah, it's nice to like. <laughs> we really exist. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nancy. Hi, thank you. I'm Terry. Robert. And Lloyd, you're much taller and more handsome in person than you are on Zoom. We should have an Say the best things. Uh, yeah. Good to meet you. Probably one member is um, joining the new, the new person whose name escapes me is joining uh, Dolly, right? right from her workplace uh, okay. where she has to come. To this no worries. So here's the agenda. Awesome. Well printed. Oh, yeah. No one will be making the chance on our first meeting. So where should, uh, where should the board yeah, where sit in order to make sure that we're on camera? Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Um, I had meant to arrange it, but I was not able to do that. But I think that generally, you know, if we all want to be, somebody's joining right now, let's get that in. We want to all be within the purview of the camera, of course. I think ideally we'll probably do something like maybe we'll like put these, because you can see it's pretty wide angle. Yeah. We could like put these desk together next time or something you know but i think that the way we are right now is sufficient and that microphone is pretty sensitive okay. uh, right. yeah so it seems like we're all yeah, yeah. Wonderful. being heard and also uh, are being caught on camera mm -hmm. all right. cool. One last thing. I think we need to pass two sets of uh, minutes now, right? Yeah, did I? Um, yeah. I did send you a, a draft. I did. It was really well, very nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There's two sets of minutes. Right. Thanks for uh, all your work on these guys. Yeah, normally, um, uh, right for this. Yeah, yeah, this is a discussion of the pending marks and changes that we were Don't leave it in there. I don't know what the what's happening. Good evening. Who's joining us? Hi, Delia's here. I can see and hear oh. you. Hello. Okay. Thank so you, Delia. Thank you. Hello. Let's get started then, because it's a few minutes after everyone here that is here that we expect, and um, let's go. I don't want to make sure Robert has his place and then I'm going to find an empty spot. Yeah, sure. Um, Just try. I know we'll, we'll arrange better next time. Um, but I think this will work for now. Everyone's on camera. Uh, Better to, are we sitting in the noise? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to keep going back and forth. Like, uh, yeah, what if I go on this side? Yeah. Dahlia, is the volume on your end pretty good? Yeah. 
the volume's great. Sorry, I keep putting myself on mute because I'm in a noisy space. But yeah, volume's great. Thank you for checking. No worries. Thank you, Dolly. And we hear you very well also. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. So, with that um, board, let's get comfortable, get our uh, affairs in order. And whenever you're ready, Lori, just uh, let's launch into the meeting as you would if we were on Zoom. Uh, the official call to order, uh, agenda, approval of minutes, and so forth. Yeah, I watched myself on uh, YouTube for the first time. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get started. Call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome everyone to the March 2023 Kensington Municipal Advisory Council meeting. Today is Wednesday, uh, March 29th, 2023. Uh, we are just now implementing the, um, the new way of doing things, which involves um, the board members uh, to the extent possible gathering here in the Kensington Library and the meeting itself uh, being available in person or uh, via Zoom as indicated in uh, our agenda. Uh, we'll start with uh, the roll call and uh, we have five members of the board present, myself, Lloyd Cowell, um, Adam, how, how do you say your last name? No Vickers. No Vickers. No, no, no Vickers. Vickers, emphasis on the mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Adam, no Vickers, Ben Berry, Rural Cook, and uh, Dahlia, hi. Uh, in the pressure of the moment, I forgot your last name, um, but welcome. Friedman, uh, no worry. Thank you. Hi. So that's five of us and uh, with the Constitutes Quorum. And so we can go ahead to consider um, substantial matters that are before the board. Um, traditionally, after uh, the roll call, we have citizens' comments, which means anybody um, can address the, the board and assembled audience uh, on just about anything at all. Uh, although we do reserve the right uh, to limit the amount of time uh, available to any one speaker. Is there anyone who has any comments they would like to share at this time? Yeah, we're just uh, allowing for a slight lag and hearing none. We'll say that the citizens. Sorry comment, about that. Hearing none, <laughs> we'll say that the citizens' comment section of this meeting is closed. And we'll move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is um, approval of meeting notes uh, from November 29th of 2022 and February 28th of 2023. We approve two and one motion. Well, no, and those are separate. Because of the people attending, I think that um, it is different. And if I, I was there for the 29th, so I could motion with the 29th. So was I. Okay. Okay, then you hadn't started yet? I know, no, no, that's right. If Dolly had not started yet, it's just three of us. Just the three of us. And um, I did distribute draft meeting notice, notes from the 29th uh, to everyone on the board earlier today. Uh, does anybody have any questions or did not receive it? Okay. And so you were going to make a motion to approve. That is the point of notes. That would be approved. We have a second. I second. Any discussion? Uh, let's take a vote. Uh, all in favor of approving the meeting notes from November 29th, 2022nd. Aye. It's unanimous. One. Next, we have uh, meeting notes from February 28th, 2023. Um, one error on that, I put a little on there. 
Additions or subtractions. I'll make a motion to approve. Thanks, uh, Ben, for your efforts at uh, producing these thorough notes. And Adam is going to make another motion for us. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I second that motion. Okay. Um, any questions, comments, additions, or subtractions for a motion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Motion to approve the minutes passes. Now we uh, come to the one item on our agenda for this month, uh, with, which relates to 303 Grizzly Peak Boulevard. Uh, normally procedure involves uh, the applicant and or their representative uh, making a short presentation uh, to everyone here and on Zoom uh, about the project. Then the board um, might ask questions. Uh, then we open it to the public to make comments or ask questions. In the closed meeting, um, a discussion that we have is open in the meeting, but at, at that point, um, uh, we would generally ask that not you know, additional comments, persuasions, et cetera, not yeah. should have been offered earlier on in the process. Not in the sense of telling you what you should do, but we ask questions on uh, Facebook. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And we'll see that. So it should be pretty straightforward. The Kensington um, Municipal Advisory Council meets and is constituted uh, by the county, we serve the pleasure of County Supervisor John Joya. The um, reason we have Kinsley Municipal Advisory Council is partly because of the general plan for the Kensington area. Uh, we're going to read the following areas of the county ordinance that apply generally, um, although not all of these will apply to the present application. Um, the general plan policies for the Kensington area first allow for the review of new residential development that provides reasonable protection for existing residences in the Kensington community with regard to views, design, compatibility, including bolt size and height, adequate parking, privacy, and access to sunlight. Also, preservation of views of scenic natural features such as bay uh, views and the mountains. And the developed environment, for example, bridges and city skyline, um, it should be incorporated into the view of development applications. Um, also to review proposed residential development for design compatibility with nearby de development, for example, uh, including building mass, height, and mechanical activities and provisions for adequate parking. New residential development will be reviewed against realistic impacts of privacy and sunlight on surrounding neighbors. And consideration will be given to review of non residential development in the Kensington community uh, with respect to the policies indicated above. Uh, that particular aspect of the board's function does not apply today. Um, the, the application um, involves uh, Seeking a variance approval for proposed sunroom involving the enclosure of an existing covered patio having a seven foot secondary front and setback where 15 feet is the minimum required. And the project does not increase the existing gross floor area and is located entirely within the building envelope of the existing single family residence. 
um, so special circumstances must exist before a variance can be granted. The variance cannot give special privileges to that other properties do not have, nor can it improve the land use that is otherwise prohibited in the zoning district. Three findings must be made to grant the variance. First, that any variance authorized shall not constitute a grant of special privilege, inconsistent with the limitations on other properties in the vicinity and the respective land use district in which the subject property is located, and that because of special circumstances applicable to the subject property because of its size, shape, topography, location, or surroundings, the strict application of respective zoning regulations is found to deprive the subject property of rights enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity and within the identical land use district, and that any variance authorized substantially meet the intent and purpose of the respective land use district in which the subject property is located. Having said all that, um, 303 Grizzly Peak. Um, okay. You're welcome. I'm the, and, I'm the property owner. So I just want to explain, we've lived in our house for 29 years, been just there, and uh, our house has two patios, one that we use all the time, that's on the top level, and one directly below it, that gets virtually no use because it's below the other patio, patio that's Got another patio on top of it, doesn't get much sunlight. So that area that is between a guest bedroom and a family room is kind of useless. We have put a patio table out there, but like there's no sunlight, so it's kind of it's pointless. So um, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to make use of this space? So it's a nice space, it's attached to our house. But we don't use it. So uh, I thought it would be nice to just bend the walls there and put a sauna in. And found Carrie and she drew up plans and it looks lovely. So I'm really looking forward to making a useless space useful. It's kind of inconceivable to me that anybody would care <laughs> because. The location of this particular part of our house is not visible to anybody, to any of our neighbors. Um, the, our neighbor to the east, uh, it's not, there's a bedroom between the patio and that neighbor. So they don't see this patio. You can't really see the patio from the side from the street because there's trees in our yard. Uh, so the only real impact of this project is that it makes the space useful for us to enjoy, which it hasn't been for 29 years. Looking forward. I'm happy to answer any questions. You can tell you the technical details. Yeah, we can <clears throat> go through the plans a little bit. So uh, as you can see, uh, I'm Carrie Fraser John, I'm the architect. Um, the subject is on, right on the corner of Grizzly Peak Boulevard and Plateau Drive. Uh, you can see from the site plan that kind of addressed that uh, the upper patio is in fact bigger than the space down below. So what we're doing is not even sort of reaching the, the edge of the existing envelope at this moment. And if we go to the plans, which are on A2.0, which I believe everybody has. Um, you can see that we're putting a couple of windows and basically filling in the, the space, put in a sauna uh, and a small shower so that the owners can enjoy this. Elevation on 3.0. You can see the difference between what's existing. Uh, we've got already a stucco uh, guardrail there. And we're going to continue the same piece of materials uh, so that it matches the rest of the building. And just fill in what's above the stucco and a few windows. Um, the one window, which would be in the shower area, would be of uh, obscure glass so that there's no privacy concerns. Allow enjoyment for the owners to uh, 
to be able to use this nice space on right off the assembly line. But yeah, we're essentially filling in about four feet tall of stucco on two, two small sides, 150 square feet. Um, and it shouldn't be having an impact on the neighbors, as Nancy said. Uh, you know, this is a, a quarter of lot, which you can see um, comes with a lot of challenges. The setbacks often are applied after these houses were built. So rendering it very difficult to do anything with one's own property. Um, so we're hoping that because this is within, you know, already the, the building envelope and shouldn't have an impact or really grant any special privilege to be able to use one's own property that's already almost fully built out, uh, that the, the board will see it as a, a positive improvement. I would add that what you can't see all the plans is that this area in the, in the corner on the, on the street side, there's two redwood trees, massive trees. So that the, so people that are on the front of the street or outside looking towards it wouldn't really see uh, any difference or much of a difference at all. Um, yeah. um, well, it's, I have a question. Um, yeah. Looking at this one, it's A0.1. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like there are several points um, in, the, uh, in, in the property itself where the existing house is within um, the setback limits to the property line. I was actually kind of surprised to look at how far away from the street the property line is actually located it's almost at a different angle. Uh, do you know anything about, uh, I mean, have, did you add on to the house? Have you moved there? It was, just, it was basically like this when you moved exactly like this. Was, uh, I didn't, I discovered the same thing you did when she took plants. Uh, it actually, you now I went back to the sale documents when we bought the house. They just, it doesn't say anything about that. I think some of this stuff may have been figured out afterward. Uh, you know, we tried, we uh, never had plans for the house until she drew them this, this year. We tried to get them the previous, the, the guy that designed the house was an architect and a builder named Benson Ford. And, uh, he would allow a release of his copyright. <laughs> and so we didn't add anything. We haven't done anything to it uh, at all. Yeah, we were quite surprised about that too. When we downloaded the assessor's map that applied the mentions or the mentions type thing. Yeah, it just seems that, I mean, the, the property is what it is, but if that line followed a little more closely to the Grizzly Peak, then we wouldn't be here having this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is what, what we assumed what, what would happen when we went and measured that, uh, yeah, an angle was surprising. Does anybody else have questions, comments? Great. Thank you. I, I guess I'll just make a quick comment just for context. Um, I know that the applicant had called the office and was a little bit concerned about this hearing. Um, you know, safe to say that in Kensington and, and really across the county, but in particular in a community like this, where there's a lot of old construction, um, there's a lot of engineering challenges in terms of the traffic and in terms of the infrastructure, and of course, the elevated fire risks um, of now and the future, presumably. You put all those together and the county takes extremely seriously all new construction that occurs in the infrastructure that's out here now, including private residences. A lot of times, uh, how, uh, rooms within houses that one wouldn't think had any community impact. Um, you know, the county goes through everything with a fine tooth comb now. And uh, part of that process is the, the KMAC advisory bodies review, which the county takes very seriously as well. Uh, Supervisor Joy in particular takes very seriously and the other board members uh, tend to defer to the elected representative of the area. So I think what I'm, what I'm saying overall is the process may seem a little bit extensive or laborious, 
but it's really for the overall, um, broadly applied, it will make Kensington a better and stronger community in the decades to come. We're, we're pretty sure of that. And so, um, you know, having this review now, you know, uh, aside from the, the time and the um, expense that it requires, um, I think ultimately is a, is a good thing for all projects. Does anyone have any concerns? Concerns or questions? No, I just, well, I wanted to ask about whether you had done other projects, um, not knowing, you know, how many times, you know, encroachments on the setback had been made. Uh, it sounds like zero. zero up to now, so. This is the first time we've stuck our toe in the water. <laughs> You can yeah. tell by the surprise. Yes. <laughs> it seems like since the, the, the existing building envelope already exceeds the variance that is required, you know, just filling it in isn't going to impact uh, the property. Yeah. It will only make, I would say, it will make our house better and therefore it will make the community better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy. Yeah. Right. It will be better. It will it will increase its value and make it a nicer place to live in. Okay. Um, well, let's formally uh, close that section of, uh, of the discussion. Is there anybody online? Looks like, uh, except for Dahlia, hi again. Um, we don't have anybody else with us, right? Is that safe to say? All right, so let's go ahead and close it down. Um, and any members board wish to be heard um, in addition to things that have been discussed so far. Um, I, I think the project is fine. I think that because the fact that they're not increasing that below, the fact that the um, uh, going, you know, the, 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 the shorter setbacks is already to the pre-existing condition, so to speak, I see no issue with the project. Yeah, I, I, uh, I have to agree. I, I think that um, the challenge here is uh, to, to deal with this house on this oddly shaped lot. And it's clear from um, that, that if, if the lot were shaped differently, we would not be having this issue. <laughs> yeah, so. Indeed. Um, so we have to have these three findings. I think that it's uh, that variance requirement three, um, that, it, that if we authorize the variance, then it substantially meets the intent and purpose of the respective land use district. Um, and I think that's where not increasing the size of the envelope of the building, uh, the fact that it's not really visible from the street, um, the fact that um, <laughs> and, and so on, and that it's, we've met this one. Um, I think that because the lot is oddly shaped um, at its what's that the southern end, um, that that meets the uh, second prong of the three, and uh, the only one that I don't have any personal knowledge about is that you know are we granting a, a special privilege inconsistent with limitations of other properties in the vicinity uh, or other properties in the respective land use district which is Pendleton and I will have to say that uh, in my opinion the answer is, is, is not um, I know that having served on the board for a while that projects that tend to incorporate just the building envelopes um, and don't go out or up or um, basically Hi, Christina. <laughs> alter the characteristics of how the building is situated on the lot um, that that it's not a special privilege and I'll say that you know, if I get if we get slapped down by the county then It'll be very, very, very well put. We will all learn today. So um, that's what I have to say. And I think that we should probably move forward to make a decision unless someone has a reason why we should. Okay. Let me, if, if, let me just uh, invite Dahlia to speak since she's a little bit 
um, disadvantaged, I think, from not being here. Dahlia, would you like yes. the feedback on this? Uh, thank you so much for that offer. I, I'm sorry, as an alternate, I thought I just listen and don't participate. So this well, is, it, I think it I is true. It is true that you're not voting today, but uh -huh. you, are, um, you are always free to speak as a member of the board, um, as an alternate, and of course, vote when needed. Um, if you have any uh, opinions or questions on this matter, uh, they're obviously open to you. And these are recorded and put on YouTube. Oh, got it. Okay. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, no comments. And I just look forward to being in person next time to make this uh, smoother and easier. All right. Thank you, Dahlia. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. So, would anyone like to uh, present a motion? I'll do it. Excellent. <laughs> um, I'd like to make a motion to um, recommend approval for CDVR 23-01003 at 303 Grizzly Chief Boulevard for a recommendation for approval of the variance um, for the proposed sunroom. I will second. Any comments or questions or discussions about the motion? Last call. All right, let's take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, so, any opposed? All right, the motion passes. Um, Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right, so congratulations. Uh, you will need to contact. Five, I guess, yeah, on the new planner. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll uh, send an email notifying them of the board's decision. And then um, you would get with them to try to get it in front of the county zoning. Well, he said, Nye sent out a notice last week. We're in there like 30. It said there's 30, there's a 30 day something period. In, a notice of intent to. Notice of intent to render an administrative decision. I think that applies to part of the application, but I, I might be misremembering so that you more from that. He, he took, advised me that after this process, then they wait till April 25th, and then if decision. nobody failure to object objects or hasn't been, yeah. then they just pass it on to the zoning administrator for a decision. Okay. So we'll notify um, of, of this part of the decision that we're rendering, and that will clear the way right then for them to issue the uh, administrative decision. Uh, variances still have to go before the zoning board to be reviewed. I believe they always do. Yeah, okay, so it's a two part. But you're moving forward, and uh, okay. you're all done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see if anybody has anything else. We're done. Motion for adjournment. Well, right before I'll, I just would like to say um, this is our first, our inaugural hybrid meeting. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It seems like it's gone well. Um, I appreciate everybody, you know, braving the rain and getting out here. The technology, a little bit of a hiccup, but it looks pretty smooth. This looks like a pretty clean interface. I think it'll be good. There'll be, you know, this will allow applicants. Sometimes they'll have architects who are far out of town or even out of the country. They'll be able to zoom in. You know, the, the, the one loser here is us uh, with the comfort of our office and home <laughs> to be doing this. Um, that's unfortunate on the one hand, but on the other hand, you know, we can get together and make the best of this too. So I think that um, it's a new era. And as long as we're required to do this by state law, we will. And I think that, um, you know, we might look back on it and think this might be a good thing. So, you know, um, now if people can't get here for some reason and you have to conduct the meeting from home in the future, that is an option. Uh, the complication is that you have to, you know, by law post the meeting, uh, we have to put your address online, and, you know, do those sorts of things. I'd like to avoid that when possible, because technically if you as an appointed member are part of this public meeting, your place of doing it, your home office, your living room, whatever, has to be open to the public. Now, it, it's something to be as a formality, it's highly unlikely someone's gonna knock on your door, but the possibility is there. And 
you know, I'd like to avoid that. I, I imagine you probably would too. <laughs> so um, I think that this will be a good thing. I think that uh, once a month, it won't necessarily be once a month when we don't have any projects to, uh, to pass judgment on, then we won't have meetings. We'll have meetings for no reason. So I think ideally we might find ourselves having eight or nine or so really productive meetings a year. It'll be a good time to get together. Hopefully we'll have participation. And I'm excited about uh, 2023 and beyond with uh, the Mac. There's a new team involved. Uh, Ruel and Dolly are very new. Ben's very new as well. Uh, we really miss Patrick and Larry and their leadership, but I'm very happy to have Lloyd taking the reins now. So um, I hope this wasn't too painful. It'll be good. <laughs> Chris is good for that. Oftentimes, our most talented leaders are the ones who have to be called to duty. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think it's pretty cool. You know, I worked in places where this is kind of the standard way of getting together when you're in multiple locations. And, uh, yeah, it's good that we have a, a video record. Because you know, I think it's easy to memory hole stuff when you're in person and notes are sort of general. And um, you know, the, the public has a right and, and sort of a duty to really pay attention to how their local government works. And this can be really helpful in doing that. And so onward and upward. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like maybe no meeting in April unless we hear within the next week or 10 days or something. If we have no projects, I, I suggest we don't meet, but yeah, yeah, there are no, I mean, projects trickle at any time. Yeah. yeah, there's one that's going to be in May by request of the applicant, right? I saw it. Yeah. Okay. So that's and as you know, all we take all of our Mac seriously, of course. Um, but you know, your responsibility of the Kensington Mac is really, really important. I mean, the, the judgments, there's, there's a history of this institution um, with Patrick and many others. And um, there's, of course, uh, vulnerability to the community in terms of infrastructure. And um, there's just a, there, there's a strength and a, a tradition in Kensington, all of which means that the Kensington Mac is a premium municipal advisory council whose voice really matters at the board of supervisors level. So the work you do here is very important to your community and to shaping where your community looks like in the future. When the Kensington Mac you know, disapproves of a, um, of a project, that project has a significant um, a significant obstacle to getting approval. So we are top shelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So did we? Uh, did we do uh, Dang, second. We did both. We motion by second. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Is all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Um, what time is it now? It's okay. Officially closed, seven thirty-seven. Yeah, it's almost right. the same time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. Good night, Good night. Dolly. Thank you. Good night. Thank you again. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right.